Marcel or Siobhan. You want to make that thing? Siobhan will be the one who's doing it. Does he do it? Right here. So they hear me when I speak to this? Yeah. Ah, okay. Marcel, can you hear? I hear you, yeah. Ah, okay. Hi, we hear you well too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good to know. Thank you. Yes. So we will, um, Shibam will share his screen, I think, once he's online. Hello. Hi. Hi, Shivam. Nice to see Hi, you. Marcel. Nice to see you too. I'm just trying to um, share my screens. Oh, most disabled yeah. participants. I can't. I can't share my screen yet. I don't have uh, privileges yet. Hi, Shivam. Yeah, I think you should be able to share now. Hi, Rina. Hi, Rina. Hi, Shivam. Is it working? Yes, we see it here. Uh, Can you see this? Yes, we see it here. Yeah. It's a bit strange. We see three screens now. Three screens? Three screens? 
Yes, this is good. Yeah. Uh, good? Not good? Not anymore. <laughs> so why is, why is it? <laughs> okay. So do I need to wait? Do I need to share something? I don't need to share anything until Dirk comes on, correct? Um, please continue to share your screen. My screen is being shared at the moment. I'm still sharing yes, it. That's good. Rainer, do you yes. hear me? Uh, Dirk is on the phone. He needs a password, is that right? To access the Zoom uh, call? I don't think so. Good <laughs>
Just let us know when it's ready, Rina. Welcome to this session on Together for a Sustainable Planet and the Digital Age. Um, we are here with some online uh, participants uh, or panelists, and we are also expecting the UN Tech Envoy uh, to join us in 15 minutes or so. So um, thank you for being here and for your patience. Okay, so uh, with that said, I will just pass the mic to Shivam, uh, who is joining us online. Shivam, over to you. Amazing. Thank you, Rina. Thank you so much. And a warm welcome to everybody who is present in the room and to all of them who are joining us online. My name is Shivam Kishore, and I'm the Senior Digital Transformation Advisor with the United Nations Environment Program. And as the sort of co-moderator, co-host for this session, I'm honored and privileged to welcome you all. Uh, you know, we, we live in an increasingly digital world uh, where digital technologies are transforming the ways in which we interact, transact, and uh, operate as a society. Uh, recently, uh, I had an incredibly inspiring encounter with a young man in a small remote village in Egypt who had learned to speak five languages using language, uh, you know, language learning uh, applications and was completing an online certificate in data science offered by an American university. I think this probably showcased one of the most positive aspects of this digital transformation. And I shared with enthusiasm the role that technologies are playing in contributing to rapid and massive improvements in access to public service, the provision of social protection, and presenting new socioeconomic opportunities for millions of people across the world. However, my enthusiasm was dampened as I, rem I was reminded that the same technologies that are creating a lot of good have also opened the door to new forms of government surveillance, exasperated many forms of pre-existing inequalities, and encourage social divisions through the spread of misinformation. And not to mention the environmental harms caused by an increasing amount of e-waste that is not being recycled. So this paradox leads us to a very critical question. And that is how do we ensure that the digital technologies are being used as a force for good to benefit the people and the planet versus enabling the harms that we see? And so how do we bring together multiple stakeholders from governments to private sectors to academia, civil society, indigenous communities collectively to repurpose this role of digital transformation to enable better sustainable outcomes. CODES, which stands for Coalition of Digital Environmental Sustainability, perhaps presents the answers to these very important questions of our time. And it is my deep pleasure to welcome Dirk Messner to come and share with us the very exciting initiative that CODES is, its progress, and what is it enabling to achieve sustainable outcomes using digital transformation. Dirk, if you can just please come on, a quick moment to introduce yourselves and, and over to you for the presentation. Thank you. Perfect, very good. Thank you very much, Shivam, for your introduction and your first reflections. My name is Dirk Messner. I'm the head of the, the president of the German Environment Agency, and the German Environment Agency is part of the CODES network, network which I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> and I brought some slides, which we are going to present in a second. Shivan, I think you are managing that part, right? <clears throat> I'm just sharing my screen. Give me two seconds yeah. here. No problem at all. Perfect. I think it's coming now. Yeah. It's visible for the others also. I think so, right? Very good. Dirk, you can just... Okay, wonderful. Basic. Good. So then let, Dirk, let just me let me know start. when you want me to move next and I'll keep, yeah. keep moving on your command. I will give you a signal. You can directly move to the next to the next slide. So I wanted to introduce a bit the work the work CODES is doing and the way CODES and our co-champions and our partners are looking at what Shivam already talked about this twin transformation between digitalization on the one hand side and sustainability transformations on the other hand side. So the starting point for us at CODES is that we observe that there are two fundamental global drivers of change, which might 
drive the main trends in the global economy in the way we produce, consume, and live during the next decades to come. And this is on the one hand side, the sustainability transformation. This is about wealth creation in the context of the planetary boundaries. And then we have the digital tr transformation. This is about artificial intelligence, machine learning, digital uh, twins, data-based decision-making processes. And as Shivam said, this is also a fundamental driver of change. And if we imagine these two drivers of change coming together chaotically, we can imagine two different pathways, right? The first pathway is here on the left-hand side, a green future. No? So this is wealth creation within the planetary boundaries supported by, by digitalization. This is the positive pathway. No? But we also can imagine e easily, Shiva, this is your paradox. No? We also can imagine easily that digitalization might even shape and trigger and leverage and accelerate unsustainable growth. No? So our question is, how do we drive these two transformation processes towards the positive, the first one, uh, which we have here on the slide, pathway, and this, there is no easy answer. And this is what we are interested in. No? And on the second slide, you have again the paradox which Shivam already mentioned. You go to the next slide, Shivam. Yeah, and you can see here on the left-hand side, the SDGs. So this is our sustainability goal system, which we all are working towards. But interestingly, when this has been created, the digital dimension has been forgotten. So this implies that the sustainability community, the environmental community, we haven't taken into account how important the digital transformation is also for sustainability goals. No? And on the other hand side, on the right hand side, you see the roadmap of, for digital cooperation, where we would argue from codes you know, that the sustainability transformation is not integrated systematically into the kind of thinking which is presented here. So what we are interested in is, is codes is A and first learning to align these two transformations. Then secondly, the question, finding answer how we could govern digitalization to leverage digitalization and its innovations towards sustainability. You know? Our third element, which we are interested in, is developing pathways to make this happen. And our fourth element is that we try to build a community, a global one, a connected one, with people from the sustainability and the digital sphere to make all of this happen. This is what CODES is, is in the essence about. On the next slide, Shivam, you can see on the left-hand side the co-champions. So this, this is the core team to say so. You, know, the, you see UNEP, you see UNDP, you see Future Earth, the Republic of Kenya, and they're the Ministry for Environment. You see the International Science Council. You see Future Earth with its program on sustainability in the digital age. And you see the German uh, Environment Agency, which I'm the president of. So we are the core champions. We are organizing the whole process, bringing a lot of people together, as I will showing in a second. And we are cooperating very intensively with the tech envoy who will be part of our panel discussion in a few minutes from now. So this is who we are. On the next slide, you can see on the left-hand side, an action plan for a sustainable planet in the digital age. This is our core product, our first important milestone, which we have produced as codes during the last months to exactly discuss Shiva, your paradox. No? How can we look at this paradox? What can we do about it? How can we drive collective action towards a sustainable digital age? And we have been mandated by the United, Secretary, United Nations Secretary General, and we try to develop a core narrative into this direction uh, and to bring this kind of messages from the action plan to different, to different global political fora. Therefore, this event today is also very important for us. On the next slide, I would like to emphasize that on our journey to develop this action plan, we organized a co-creative process with many actors from around the globe to make this action plan happen. So this is not a product of the product of the six, seven core, core, core champions I talked about. This is a this is a action plan which has been developed in, inter, in interaction with 1,000 stakeholders from over 100 countries, which we contacted and which we worked with during the last 12 months to produce this action plan. And we launched the action plan for the first time in June 2022. And we presented it at UNEA 2022 at Stockholm, Stockholm Plus 50 several, several weeks ago in other international fora. 
So the important thing here is co-creative process, 1000 uh, stakeholders involved. We're trying to create this community where digital and sustainability thinking is integrated systematically. On the next slide, some uh, reflections about content and maybe about the, the, the paradox which Shiva mentioned. No? So what we are taking from the global literature around sustainability and digitalization is that most reports are arguing that digitalization could be an enabler for sustainability, have in mind circularity of the economy, decarbonization, resource efficiency, energy efficiency. All of this can probably being organized and governed easily with these kind of innovations from the digital sphere than without those. But on the other hand side, we also see in most of the studies, and we agree on that, that there is no automatism towards a digital sustainable planet. Automatism implies that digitalization also had pitfalls and risks. Shivam, you mentioned several of those beforehand. Therefore, here is a governance challenge. We need to drive digitalization towards sustainability. On this slide, you see some of the fields where we see enabling dynamics. No? So digitalization and making supply chain transparent. This is about circular, circular economy. Automated sustainability decision making based on data, optimizing this towards sustainability goals. No? Enabling access of consumers to sustainability information. So you can see that we have an optimistic take on the opportunities of digitalization for sustainability, but we also need to understand the risks of digitalization for sustainability. On the next slide, you can see our, our, our metaphor you know, to understand the transformation process between digitalization and sustainability for the next decades to go. And we argue that we need to learn first to align digitalization with sustainable development. So bringing these two paradigms together in one narrative, you know, the second element is then, and the second shift is, we have to understand the, the negative impacts, the pitfalls, the risks, and we have to mitigate this. No? You all know that many of the digital infrastructure and tools are resource and energy efficient. So mitigating this, greening IT, is one of the elements in shift number two. And shift number three is learning to accelerate digital information innovations for sustainability goals. So this is our perspective on the three shifts which we need to have in mind and work on all of these three, right? And on the next slide, you then can see that around our main shifts, alignment, mitigation of negative impacts, acceleration, innovation, accelerating innovation towards sustainability based on digital dynamics, we developed what we call nine impact initiatives for implementation. We found for all these three shifts, main areas of work where we argue that this could be catalytic, this could be global in nature, this needs to be a process, process where we bring together multi-stakeholder initiatives to leverage these kind of initiatives and activities. And if we would drive all these initiatives, our hypothesis is that we would move step by step towards our paradigm of bringing together the digital transformation and the sustainability transformation. So nine impact initiatives. And I, our idea is now to gather institutions, organizations, actors, and investors around these impact initiatives, which we are going to talk about at the panel more in detail. On the next slide, we are mentioning some of the impact initiatives where we are already making progress. I'm only, only mentioning those. Shivam and Reina will talk about specific aspects here. So we are making progress in the education for digital sustainability rearm. We are bringing actors together here in Canada. UNESCO is part of this. UNIP is working on this. So something is emerging already. We are working uh, intensively at the environmental, uh, the German Environment Agency together with international state stakeholders on digital infrastructure pledges. This is about procurement, procurement standards, because 20% of our of our, glo our global demand is public procurement, no? and a lot of IT investments are in here. How can we drive this systematically towards sustainability? This is something which we are already working with, with a number of international actors. Then digital sustainability innovation hubs. This will be taken up by Reina in a second. And data assessment and digital public goods. I think, Shivam, you will talk about this. So these are examples where we are moving forward, and all of you who are interested in 
parts of these initiatives, please let us know. On the next slide, I'm only uh, wanting to, to highlight that our philosophy is the twin transformation. And a very important element is that we try to support global United Nations related processes in this regard. And our next most important milestones are 2023, our contributions and contributing to the summit of the future, bringing this systematic approach of looking at say, sustainability from a digitalization perspective and the other way around. And in 2024, UNIA 6 is something which we would like to work with others and with partners towards. So this is what we have been doing. This is our basic structure, our basic philosophies. And if you would be interested on the next slide, I'm asking you to, to join the community which we are building. I'm asking you to lead uh, one of these initiatives if you would be interested in doing so, maybe together with other partners and to advocate for, for codes because we would like to consolidate the growing community and to develop it further with new actors being interested in what we are trying to drive forward. In my last slide, which I wanted to show you then, and I'm handing over to the next uh, panelist in a second, is that you also might be interested to help us to get our stakeholder mapping of actors who are working exactly in the field of bringing digitalization and sustainability together further. And here is a very good news. When we started to work on that, Two years ago, there were relatively few actors and organizations really focusing on the twin transformation of uh, di digitalization and sustainability. Now we have in our mapping exercise here found that already up to 300 organizations are moving into this direction and this number is growing. So help us to understand who uh, else is working in this field to organize our community. And this is what we are aiming at. And with these last sentences, I would like to hand over already to Reina, who is sitting physically in the event. So Reina, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for listening. Presentations. So um, from here, I'm going to take over the moderation and we're going to shift our focus into the room. And uh, so I'll just first quickly introduce myself, uh, as I forgot to do that in the beginning. My name is Reina Otsuka. I am the Digital Innovation Lead for the Nature, Climate and Energy Portfolio, working at the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP in short. And UNDP is also one of the co-champions uh, that uh, Dirk just uh, kindly presented. So um, we will also have uh, Mr. Amandeep Gill joining us in a few minutes. He is a bit delayed because of a previous panel that he's on, but we expect him to arrive here in 10 to 15 minutes. And I just would love to invite everybody to start to think about how you can contribute to codes as well as today's discussion. Because um, after this, we will present the three uh, initiatives that uh, Dirk just kindly mapped out and invite all of you to please contribute your thoughts and ideas, including any you know, actual contribution or, or partnership that we can start to think about uh, during today's uh, discussion. So it will be a round table. Please do um, just be aware that you will be suddenly called on to, to discuss. So we will um, start, I guess, from impact initiative number seven. If Shibam, if you, Shibam, you can uh, share the slide again. Yeah, I see you are nodding. So the sharing slide is taking a bit of time, but maybe I'll just start um, since I'm here. Uh, and so, oh, thank you, I see it. So impact number seven. So if you remember, there's three shifts that we are proposing as a framework. And the third shift is about how do we leverage on digital technologies so that we can uh, advance our work or, or address a lot of the environmental issues that are happening in the world. And number seven is about creating an innovation network on green digital innovation for Africa region. And what we, we've been doing is we've been um, exchanging a lot in informal ideation with a few network partners. Uh, and this is what has been coming out so far as the gaps that we see. So we first noticed that there's 
um, many strong digital innovation support going on. There's D4D, uh, you know, there's the GIZ Digital Hub. I see Alex, <laughs> because you know from Rwanda, there's a lot of ecosystem, you know, being established there. But we also kind of, we noticed that it's not, the focus is not only about climate or nature or pollution. The focus could be many things from digital inclusivity to a variety of issues. And so we do think that it's important that we start to converge our efforts toward making sure it is addressing environmental sustainability, along with the many other important issues. The second gap that we see is that the regional or global actors and the national innovation actors are not always complementing each other. So there's always a lot of capacity gaps or support gaps that perhaps by coordinating with each other, it can be filled in a much better way. The third gap we see is that um, there is a mismatch between the regional innovation supply and the demand. So again, you know, there are all these innovation hubs and uh, support is trying to nurture a lot of different businesses, new innovation, but that is not always demand driven. And also there's a, a lack of effort in actually starting on market or trying to, um, trying to, how should I say, cross the chasm of um, risk-free investment or risk-free grants to real commercial investment. So we really want to bridge this gap in three ways. And finally, we also feel that the green business offer requires a systemic or behavior change. And it's not just about selling new products to somebody. It usually requires, for example, if you want to start on clean energy, you can't, you can, of course, you know, start a, a, a pilot project or you can just start a mini grid site. But that is usually not enough because the demand is not enough in rural areas. And instead, you might have to approach it in a comprehensive way where you create a mini grid site, but also provide agriculture services or other productive use of energy in order for the mini grid uh, to actually be able to operate in a sustainable manner. So we want to make sure that we think about this digital innovation, not just about the technology, not just about one single business, but look at it as an ecosystem of different pot potential businesses. And so based on this, sorry, Sribam, next slide, please. The, this uh, impact initiative we are trying to um, start to design uh, together with everybody to, in this room um, is in four components right now, and we'd, we'd love to hear your views. So first is to align the regional capacity, national market-driven innovation needs, and the private finance views so that we can set a common regional challenge or a set of common regional challenges on clean energy, waste management, agri-food, and perhaps a few other very important uh, issue areas. The second component is to create a network of digital innovation support providers to coherently support innovation. So this means all the regional or global innovation uh, initiatives and national hubs or local hubs. Uh, how can we bring them all together and do some kind of capacity development or uh, innovation support coherently through a sprint? Tentatively, we're saying one year, but it could be three years, it could be two years. We, we just want to make sure that we try to align everybody and have a concerted effort uh, on, toward the innovation supply. The third component is about matchmaking. Um, so UNDP uh, this year actually tested a new way of um, supporting innovation or solutions. So we actually um, basically first did a call for proposal for the solution side and then vetted all the solutions so that we have a very good list of potential digital technology solutions that can address climate change issues and nature and pollution issues. And then on the other hand, we also called for proposals from the people who want to use this. So in our case, we work with the governments and when the government wants to try out the technology, uh, the funding gets provided to the, the government or the, the national um, counterpart. Instead of, um, instead of funding the business side. So by doing this, we match make the needs and the solutions and see how it actually plays out. And finally, uh, we do think that knowledge products and policy discussions are really important for this because uh, you know, when we start to demonstrate the technology and uh, perhaps even a set of technologies in the national context, you start to notice that to, to actually unlock such innovation in a bigger scale, you need to also change the law or you need to change the regulation. And so we do want to have a way to feed this back into the policy discussions that are happening in the country. So this is the current idea that we have. 
uh, we will uh, focus most on this initiative, but again, of course, open to your inputs on other two initiatives that we're going to present as well. Uh, so we'll come back to this uh, item after this. So with that said, uh, Shivam, uh, now I'd like to pass it to you to introduce impact initiative number eight. Yes, it's an eight now. Public goods. And before I get into what that is, I think we the conversation that we have been having around the role that digital technologies are playing in enabling sort of these systemic shifts across all sectors is bringing forward some really interesting questions on the role of large corporations when it comes to data governance and the governance of digital infrastructures, where currently we have created an environment where very few corporations, by and large, have access to vast amounts of digital infrastructure. And that is creating some monopolies in the marketplaces. Additionally, we are also seeing a significant divide in the accessibility that different regions have to these digital infrastructures. Regions that have a high level of economic privilege generally have access to better digital infrastructures, which allow them then to leverage these digital infrastructures to promote better civil services for their citizens. Conversely, regions that are economically disadvantaged generally tend to have lower access to digital infrastructures thereby creating an environment where they're unable to provide in a similar way the level of civil services that is conducive to the well-being of their citizens. These two challenges are really starting to serve as a conversation on the importance of having digital infrastructures that are open, inclusive, and not governed by monopolized corporations. And this is where the importance of digital public goods come into play. And this is what this impact initiative eight is emphasizing. Overall, it is really trying to mitigate the lack of inclusive digital infrastructure that we see collectively in the digital space today. The vision for the impact initiative is to increase sustainability focused technology and knowledge commons. Now, if you're looking at the digital infrastructure, we're looking at the physical systems that including data centers, including um, physical systems uh, that are the basis for supporting digital infrastructures. We're looking at platforms on which applications are built. This can include cloud applications. And finally, we're looking at the applications themselves that are the front end, the front facing uh, sort of software pieces with which we interact the most. Now, the what we are trying to do through this initiative is to really scale the availability and accessibility of this infrastructure end-to-end. -end. So looking at the physical infrastructure, the hardware, the platforms, and the applications as public goods. And this includes everything from data collection and analysis, building of models, knowledge aggregation, and visualizations. And we have made some uh, good progress so far. Uh, the global partnerships on uh, AI, which is a very, very wonderful and a very impactful undertaking, is starting to develop an international catalog for datasets that is relevant for supporting key sectors to transition to net zero. They undertook a study to really understand what are the key barriers that are preventing the use of artificial intelligence in supporting climate action. And that result highlighted some very interesting observations. One of them was the fact that there was a lack of availability of datasets that could be leveraged by the artificial intelligence algorithms. And hence why they started this undertaking and the results of which will be open as public goods, which will be able so that multiple organizations across the world could leverage this open data sets to inform their own algorithms to promote climate sustainability. One other good example is the digital for sustainability learning pathway that uh, is being sort of launched or that was launched actually by uh, United Nations Environment Program. I was I'm glad to be a part of it and the United Nations uh, System Staff College. 
it's basically a, a learning pathway that comprises of four modules that really dives deep into the intersection that Dirk so succinctly spoke about of digital transformation and sustainability and gives the audience some basic and important tools to really start to leverage technologies to enable better nature, pollution and climate goals within the regions. The first module, the first learning module of, of this learning pathway will be uh, launching tomorrow, which is very exciting. And again, this is gonna be an, an, an open digital public good, which means it's open and free and, and easily leveraged by everyone in the society. We'll be able to share the link with you all after if you're interested in enrolling. I highly encourage and highly recommend it. And lastly, we are continuing to facilitate exchange with other stakeholders. The most, one of the most important ones being the Digital Public Goods Alliance, which is really a global sort of undertaking of multiple stakeholders that are coming together to publish digital public goods that are again looking to advance or provide digital infrastructure that can be leveraged to advance sustainability. And this conversation is ongoing. I think like all things that intersect digital tech and sustainability, it's an ongoing conversation. We are, we are starting to scratch the surface and the opportunities are plenty. Like Dirk mentioned, there are of course challenges that we have to be aware of. One of the key ones being as public goods mature, the importance of inclusive governance becomes very important because one of the key challenges that public goods surface is after the initial granting or the funding has expired, who takes control of the public good? Given the fact that it's open and inclusive, having a lack of monopolized corporations owning something can present that side effect. So we have to be careful as we progress this effort, but with a very clear mindset, with a very clear vision, we are hoping to keep catalyzing the efforts to progress this. And again, I welcome a very live and active discussion on this uh, after as well. Um, and any questions and recommendations as well. Again, it's a collective undertaking and, and we really value all feedback and input and support we can get to progress this work. So Rina, over to you and, and thank you again for the time. Thank you, Shiva. I also share the passion on digital public goods and infrastructure so we can never talk, stop talking to each other. Um, I'll quickly pass the mic to Dirk uh, Messner again. Uh, if Dirk, you can please uh, very quickly introduce number five, impact initiative number five, and then we'll try to come back to the room so that we can have a discussion here. Yes, we can hear. To be brief because I saw that Amandeep is now on the panel also, so we need some time to listen to Amandeep and then having a discussion uh, very briefly on the uh, initiative number five, with, which is on digital infrastructure, infrastructure pledges. The main idea here is that around the globe, public actors and governments are making large scale investments in this field currently. And there is a point, a leverage point for us to bring the actors together to develop a joint understanding of sustainable oriented digital infrastructures, talking about standards, talking about criteria. And uh, for, against this background, we are bringing together international actors to discuss these issues. The World Bank is one, other member states of the European Union is, is others. And we are also bringing UNDP and UNEP in to get the perspective of developing countries into the, into the whole debate. So this is the direction in which we are, which we are moving forward. And we can build in this case on the experience of my own agency, the German Environment Agency, because in the German context, our agency is responsible for developing mechanisms, governance structures and standards for greening the IT sector in the public procurement domain. You know? So we can bring in this as an agency, we can bring in this kind of knowledge and procedural um, capacities into the process of building an initiative around public procurement for digital infrastructures. Thank you very much so far. And I would like to hand over again to Rina and I'm keen to listen to Amandeep now. Thank you. Thank you, Dirk. So we would love to first warmly welcome uh, Mr. Amandeep Gill, uh, the UN Tech Envoy, as everybody knows. Uh, thank you so much, Amand, for joining us. Um, so we actually only have one microphone, so <laughs> we will have to pass with each other. Um, so we can, if we can start from a few questions to you, and then we will open up to the, the uh, audience or the participants here so we can have a roundtable. Thank you. 
So the first question is, um, as you're leading the global digital contact, uh, I hope um, if you can share a little bit of your vision on what you see as codes to play a role in the digital, global digital contact process. And if there's any barriers that you see that we can, we can try to um, join forces to, to um, unlock, we would love to hear uh, your views. Thank you very much for this invitation and thank you for the opportunity to share some thoughts. The Global Digital Compact uh, is a process uh, that is a 360 degree look at digital. And of course, uh, digital environmental sustainability has to be part of that 360 degree look, uh, both on the challenge side, uh, the increasing problem of e-waste, uh, the energy consumption, uh, and the consumption of uh, uh, other resources by the digital industry. Uh, and uh, on the positive side of the ledger, the opportunity to turn the world away from a linear extractive model to more of a circular economy, the opportunity to know more precisely where we are on our different environmental indicators and to tune policy uh, in time so that we can achieve our environmental uh, biodiversity and climate change goals. So that's the context in which uh, uh, the uh, Global Digital Compact uh, could be looking at this issue. Uh, there is a process that has started in New York, uh, facilitated by Sweden and Rwanda, and uh, we in the Tech Envoys office would be supporting that process. Uh, and different topics will be picked up and uh, focused on. So I'm sure that during the course of those discussion, uh, CODES as uh, one of the leading initiatives in this space would have an opportunity to share uh, the good work that it's doing and some suggestions in terms of high level policy uh, responses uh, by uh, leaders and governments uh, around uh, the globe. Thank you so much. We're really thrilled to take part in this discussion. Um, and one of the biggest uh, gaps we saw in the previous digital cooperation roadmap was the environment. And as you know, codes started from trying to fill this gap. So we are very, very happy that this time round, we're able to have environment from the very beginning. Absolutely. So uh, in a sense, if you go back to the high level panel on digital corporations report of June 2019, uh, this aspect was mentioned in the context of uh, the digital commons architecture, that there are some areas which need to be treated as commons and they need uh, to be driven by dynamic coalitions, multi-stakeholder coalitions, uh, within which you know you can have UN agencies, relevant UN agencies participate, but they are not the only uh, consequential actors. So when you take environment, it's of course UNEP, UNFCC and uh, other colleagues from across the UN system, health, WHO, uh, UNICEF, uh, uh, UNAIDS, uh, Global Fund, there are many such actors, but then they have to be supported by other participants. So it's uh, good to see, encouraging to see that CODES is picking up that vision of uh, the digital commons architecture and bringing it alive. Likewise, there are actors in the health domain um, I dare, for instance, which are doing the same. Uh, so my office is uh, encouraged by all that and would uh, uh, be happy to facilitate wherever it can. Thank you so much. Uh, Dirk uh, and uh, Shivam, you are still online, I know. Uh, please do chip in if you have any comments or questions to Amandeep. No, I'm, I'm Andeep. I would like to thank you for your encouragement because for us it's very important to link our very concrete activities with the overall vision which you are developing. Because as you have been seeing, we are trying now to go into the implementation phase. We are trying to bring actors together to, to develop activities which make a difference in, in certain areas, in our nine, in our nine initiatives. No? And having this under the umbrella of your overall thinking as UN Tech Envoy is something which we uh, perceive and recognize as very, very important. So thank you very much for your engagement and for your support. And the interaction between the UN system on the one, other, one hand side, as you mentioned, and actors around the UN system supporting the vision of a sustainable digital uh, pathway, this is something which we are really focusing on. Thank you, Dirk. Yes, absolutely. So um, this uh, 
aspect that was mentioned today by Shivam uh, and you, uh, the digital public infrastructure, and how to make sure that these uh, infrastructures are designed well, uh, including with sustainability in mind. Uh, just for uh, the information of those listening in, uh, you know, we are embarking on some work on uh, principles, design principles for safe and inclusive uh, digital public infrastructure and uh, I'm sure that will include a reference to sustainability and that's something that you know we can continue uh, to collaborate on. Wonderful, thank you so much. So um, since we're starting to talk about more action-oriented things, um, actually, Amandi, be before you joined, I just presented the initiative which we would like to open up the discussion to um, everybody in the room now. And we are, one of the initiatives that CODES will try to lead is um, Impact Initiative number seven, which is about nurturing the local innovation or the regional and national and local innovation network uh, in order to um, to really unlock digitalization for the climate change and biodiversity and pollution uh, goals that you, you just mentioned in Africa region. Would you have any um, views or any insights that we can already start to discuss so that we can strengthen this initiative? And UNDP will be leading the the um, consultation process of this uh, potential joint project or initiative, uh, along with uh, many uh, partners that we've already been starting to talk with. We'd love to hear your views on how, because you, you have a lot of background actually in innovation, we'd love to hear how we can strengthen this. Uh, so this is commendable and I think you have the right partners on the ground and Africa is the right place to be doing this. Um, what I would uh, just emphasize, and I'm sure it's already part of your thinking, is that uh, innovations come from ecosystems, uh, they come from communities, uh, and uh, it would be important to strengthen the local innovation systems uh, and not have them uh, dependent on uh, uh, knowledge making uh, coming from uh, another context. Uh, that may be needed for a while, but I think uh, it should be very limited uh, and the focus should be on building capacity locally, uh, particularly capacity to use uh, data science, uh, local data sets for uh, local uh, benefit. Uh, context is also important uh, in the, con in the um, considerations around diversity, around the human rights impact uh, because tech can have all kinds of implications, some of them unintended. So when you base it in context, when you bring more diverse players, local players into play, then you can address uh, some of those uh, uh, risks. Uh, building local capacity, building local data sets uh, for the green transition would require targeted efforts. And that's uh, again, one of the areas that uh, my office is engaged on in the context of what we call data commons. Uh, so data commons in priority SDG areas like agriculture, food security, health, the green transition, education, humanitarian emergencies. Uh, so in each of those areas, there is need to build human resource, but there's also need to build affordable distributed infrastructure uh, and then standards and benchmarks. Uh, so, uh, from the UN's perspective, those common standards and benchmarks are important. They have to be done in a neutral, independent uh, way so that there is no lock-in into particular uh, commercial or other interests and uh, the countries or regions which are adopting uh, these have full freedom, full agency uh, to develop the ecosystem they wish uh, to develop. Thank you for the wise words. Um, I would like to open up to the participants, uh, especially I see Alex from Rwanda in the room. Would you like to contribute some thoughts? And since Rwanda has many innovation and the local innovation um, very strongly uh, nurtured there, how, how can Rwanda, for example, be a part of this initiative? Or, or perhaps I would love to hear your experience as well. Sure. Sure, start from that. And perhaps... Um, yeah. uh, 
Thank you very much, uh, Rina, and thank you uh, for this opportunity. My name is Alex Sinhare, and I'm the CEO of Rwanda ICT Chamber, which is a member-based organization um, building the local ecosystem, as you are saying, innovation ecosystem. Uh, we run about um, four uh, innovation hubs, uh, starting from ideation up to acceleration, uh, acceleration and um, work hand in hand with the government, but we are a private sector um, member, non-profit non organization. So my question um, is regards to the last points you made on data commons, and especially in the food security agriculture uh, space. Uh, we're currently running, um, actually <laughs> we're training up uh, data scientists and data engineers, uh, a, a program that uh, is, is we're doing in collaboration with the government. Uh, we put out a call for applications um, a few weeks ago uh, to see if there's interest in this, uh, in this topic. We had overwhelming uh, interest. Actually, 1,320 uh, uh, applicants within a week's time. Now, their interest is building, becoming data engineers. Uh, some of them are employed, some of them are still students, some of them have their own innovations. Uh, but all, one of the most constraints is accessing data sets, uh, meaningful data sets that uh, may have, may, way, uh, may go back way um, in, in time, uh, that are large enough that they can use for training algorithms. And I understand within the UN system, there's Quite a lot of data sets that have been collected, whether it's FAO or um, UNDP and, and several. So my question um, is, is just on the practical part uh, of what you are mentioning. How accessible are these? Um, are the tools and the and, and, and the options that you're you're opening up? So uh, to understand if we could. Um, build something around that in, in terms of giving them access. So that's uh, my, my question. Uh, I don't know if I, if I should wait for you to respond to that uh, and then respond to Irina's question. Thank you. Sure, so uh, the data problem is a significant challenge and what you mentioned these longitudinal data sets uh, over several years, uh, the, um, the honest, direct answer is that you have to build those data sets. Uh, and that should be, in fact, part of the training. Uh, because to expect and uh, uh, that somehow a curated, complete data set would just be given to you so you can start modeling straight away on that uh, is to kind of simplify the uh, complex reality. Uh, and therefore, even the training that we have today on data science needs to be reinvented. Uh, you look at the MOOCs, uh, some of the uh, courses that are available online or some of the boot camps there uh, that are out there, the assumption is that the data is available, that somehow you just need to fix the interoperability, coax those data sets out of uh, public authorities or the private sector, you know, uh, have APIs uh, plugged into Twitter and, you know, then that will solve all your problems. I think uh, the hard work around AI, around data science is 80% data. Uh, so this has to be part of the training and uh, data that really speaks to the problem that you're trying to solve. If you're trying to solve a Rwandan problem on agriculture and food security, uh, then I think without having the local data sets around that, uh, local data sets that are built in a diverse way that bring together the just the problem solving around it, bringing together different perspectives so that the data scientists understand what data is relevant. Sometimes the traditional farmers may have more understanding of what is relevant for uh, the data problem then you know uh, university academia type of experts so that's the thing and and where possible at some stage once you have that foundation once you understand the problem uh, and the problem can be fully understood only by working with the data uh, not outside of that context then you can look at okay what is the other kinds of metadata that can fit in or maybe matching 
data sets that FAO and others may have from other geographies that have similar agroclimatic uh, characteristics. So that, in a kind of, you know, uh, honest way is the answer uh, to you. But it's great to see the interest that, you know, so many people are interested. And our challenge is really to meet that interest with courses, with opportunities uh, that are uh, up to the challenge. Yeah. Th thank you very much. Actually, uh, speaking more on the latter part of the kind of data that we need, um, just to respond to the question that Rena asked, so we've been doing the, uh, this part uh, of data collection and building systems. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, the UNDP uh, in Rwanda office ran a few programs uh, a few years ago uh, where uh, some of our entrepreneurs and innovators are building IoT devices um, for farmers uh, that are um, solar powered and so on. And these are for now uh, for some time now have been collecting data. Uh, we're also involved in cold chain solutions, again, um, within uh, energy, uh, with uh, off-grid energy systems. These are also collecting data and we, we, we're looking for data sets that augment. It's not, uh, it's not starting, uh, starting from scratch. Uh, but um, in terms of, uh, uh, to your question, Rena, how um, involvement I mean, we, we, we're part of the ecosystem we've been building. I've been building the ecosystem for the last uh, 11 years. Um, and uh, I know um, from, from uh, just from a, a factual point of view that you need an, a community to start with that understands, like the, uh, like the tech envoy was saying, that understands the local problems and build solutions that respond to these, uh, to these um, uh, to the problems that are, that are there. For us, we are open uh, to join the coalition uh, the, uh, codes and to see uh, where do we plug in. Uh, we have labs uh, for uh, uh, prototyping, for, uh, whether it's IoT or other types of, uh, of equipment. And would be glad to see uh, how we plug into, in, into this and uh, kick off. But um, we're already on the journey and we're ex uh, excited that uh, this is, 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 uh, is available uh, as a global platform, actually, uh, to see how we compare notes in, in terms of what's working and what's not working. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Alex, for the wonderful intervention. Um, Yes, we really welcome you to join the codes. Um, there's a big network of different digital technology, data scientists, uh, everybody from companies to UN organizations. And so I'm sure you know a lot of your problems, many people would love to uh, pitch in to, to, um, to solve it together uh, and to, to um, support on the capacity building side as well. And on Impact Initiative 7, we'll really be happy if you can join uh, and we can start to discuss more about how to design this uh, in the Rwandan context. So we will keep in touch on that. Thank you. Yes. Rina? Shivam, yes, please. <laughs> Sorry, this, this is the voice coming from on the screen. I, I sort of just I had a quick, I had a quick comment to add uh, to what Amin said uh, on Alex, which I fully agree with uh, in terms of the need to sort of build in the capacity to harness data in the way that is regional and contextualized. But Alex, also in addition to that, I think there's an increasing recognition by a lot of organizations uh, to surface a lot of these data sets as public goods. Uh, the global public, um, so the Digital Public Goods Alliance. Um, and the GPAI are two good examples of uh, organizations and entities that are working quite effectively to surface some of these data sets uh, in, an, in an open, in a more transparent way as public goods. So maybe there are some resources for you to also consider in addition to continuing to build your own uh, capacities to harness data through IoTs within the local contexts, uh, like Amin was saying. So just, just want to do as a quick FII, just as, a, as an additional piece of information there that might be helpful. Thank you, Shivam. Um, if there's anybody else who, who might want to give us any inputs or any words, we would love to hear from you. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. Uh, I am Sally from Iraq. I'm active 
person in the entrepreneurship ecosystem and managing innovation hub in Iraq. Uh, due to the 40 year of conflict in Iraq, we are lacking having access to even very important governmental and macroeconomical data in Iraq. And even if you have access, then the quality is not that good and it's not aggregated or collected in one uh, data bank. So the accessibility is really difficult. And regarding this initiative, if I, I don't, I have a question if there is any influence on big stakeholders or governments, for example, to be enabler for this uh, three goals that's mentioned in, in, in this uh, initiative. Uh, Dirk uh, or Shiban, would you like to answer the question? Yeah, I, I could uh, start answering and others can compliment on that. I mean, the answer to this question is, as you have been seeing, we have a core team, you know, and in this core team, you can see, and uh, or in this core team, the philosophy of working together as a stakeholder community is being reflected because we have the UN system on board, we have science organizations on board and governmental organizations from member states on board. And this is also the pattern which we try to organize when we look at the overall community. I talked about 1,000 stakeholders we brought into the discussion who, and who had been interested in interacting with us. No? And the structure is the same. We have science on board, we have the UN on board and member states on board. And these are the sources you could get access to if you start joining our community because we try to be as interactive as possible and we might help you to find the right partners in the right place to answer your concrete answers, your concrete uh, challenges. Thank you. Shivam, would you like to add from the digital public good angle? I think it's, it's really just complementing what Dirk said that, you know, the, the whole premise behind this undertaking is to really bring together organizations in an intelligent way to progress common goals uh, in this case, you know, organizations like DPGA, the Digital Public Good Alliance, are a great uh, partner, are a great sort of uh, stakeholder within the GOLDS initiative that are doing some wonderful work uh, and giving access uh, to public goods on, on things that matter. Uh, so I would encourage uh, sort of the, 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 the individual to join and, and considering sort of uh, becoming a part of COIS so that we can keep an active dialogue and, and help, like Dirk was saying, help facilitate the right partnerships to, to meet your needs and goals. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Any Anybody else who may want to provide some inputs? Nope. Great. Um, in that case, we uh, are actually almost at time. So I, I think I would pass the mic to Amandeep one last time to, um, if you can please give us a, some final words on how we can work toward the future after this, Amandeep. Thank you so much. I think uh, you're set on a, uh, on a good path. The framework is there and the action is taking place. And most importantly, the partnerships are there, the stakeholders, the thousand plus that Dirk mentioned. So this has been uh, an incredible platform, uh, uh, example of a platform that's a multi-stakeholder, that's inclusive and that's impactful. Uh, the larger challenges and our, our friend from Iraq mention those, uh, uh, where do we start in those kind of situations? Uh, I think uh, if I were uh, to respond to that, I would say uh, this uh, is an opportunity in a sense to leapfrog a few uh, uh, intermediate stages and uh, start investing in, um, even if it's small data sets, you know, specific problems, uh, that people face on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's traffic accidents or the state of roads, you know, building some data sets around that, uh, because you want to light the spark for the youth, uh, and you want to demonstrate to them the power of data, the power of digital, and the power of having agency over your own problems, not waiting for someone else to solve those problems. Even if it's small examples, you know, you create that uh, kind of uh, a dynam uh, dynamic. And again, in the uh, digital environmental uh, sustainability space, uh, if we look back at Shamal Sheikh, uh, this was a very different uh, COP meeting 
uh, for the first time, digital came up very strongly uh, in several areas. Uh, uh, the Climate Trace Coalition, for instance, and the Secretary General, when he spoke there, he emphasized, apart from the issues of climate justice, loss and damage, that came up again for the first time in a big way. I think digital made a grand entry. Uh, our challenge is going to be uh, able to um, uh, meet the expectations that are there of our and, uh, and also to be as collaborative as possible, as inclusive as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amandeep. With this, we would like to close the session. Thank you so much, everybody, for being in the room, and thank you for everybody online. Thank you, Dirk and Shivam as well, for joining us online. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a lovely day.